Hello, I'm AppSheet Product Manager Christian Schalk, and in this episode, we will introduce how to build and customize user interfaces in AppSheet. Let's get started. Building modern web application user interfaces, or simply UIs, can be one of the most difficult tasks in application development. Fortunately, AppSheet greatly simplifies UI development with the following key features. Use case based intelligent view types, which is a collection of pre built customizable UI building blocks enabling easy and rapid UI assembly. Declarative UI branding, which provides point and click customization of an app's overall look and feel. Other options include conditional formatting, which allows for dynamic visual formatting of UI elements based on logical conditions. Let's review these three features in more detail. AppSheet currently provides 11 distinct view types that are ready to run out of the box and are based on the most common web app UI patterns. Included are the familiar deck, table, form, gallery, as well as other specialized view types such as chart, calendar, or maps, all of which do not require coding or extensive customization. Let's take a look at AppSheet's view types in action. Okay, so let's play around with some different view types. So I have my demo app here for which is basically a task tracking app where I have tasks and owners. Um, so now let's switch over to the views tab here. So now I can see I have three different uh, views under the primary navigation, which corresponds to this area on the preview pane. So I owners and tasks and calendar, right? So let's customize this owners view. So as you can see, the view name is owners and I'm fetching from the owners table. Uh, currently I have the view type set to deck, uh, but I could also change the different view types and just you know select one that I like for my application. I think I'll keep it at deck though. And then the position is where this button on the bottom will appear. So maybe I wanna put it in the middle or put it on the last part of the preview window, doesn't really matter. Um, in this case, let's maybe change a few more things. So maybe instead of a square image, I want a round image. So there we go, now we got a round image. Uh, maybe I want to, instead of the owner name over here on the primary header, maybe I want to just put the email. So I'll override the auto assigned um, name. And then as you can see, the owner name has switched over to the secondary header. So that's why it's showing up uh, in the second fashion, all right? Um, and then Finally, maybe I want to change the icon here at the, the bottom. So in this case, instead of like a list type icon, maybe I want something that looks more like a people icon. So I'll just change that like that. And there we go. So now I've customized my owner's view. Um, actually, in retrospect, maybe I'll switch that back to a square image, right? So there we go. I've shown you how I can customize the view for the owners. Let's go ahead and create a new view, all right? So this one, I'm gonna create a map view. So I could actually just type in a map and have it search for different suggestions. In this case, I could have a map view with the address columns. So I, if I select that, that will create a ready to run map view. But in this case, let's go ahead and create it from scratch. So I'm gonna create a new view and I want the new view, the name of the view to be called map. And I wanna pull data from the owner's table because I know the owner's table happens to have an address. So as, as you can see here, each owner has their respective address. And so in this case, let's go ahead and customize it. And I'll change the view type now to a map type. And there we go, we have a map type. And most importantly, as I need to select the map column, right? And I have the address ready to go. And so now you see the dots that will appear for the different owners, I guess, locations, right? So uh, maybe I can do some other updates, like instead of like a automatic, I can select a road or aerial. Um, and if we also zoom in a little bit more, I can actually click on the actual records or the, the map icons, and I can see the record pulling up that corresponds to that owner, all right? And then finally, maybe I wanna change the, um, the UI a bit. And so I'll change the, um, the icon to something with a map. So I'll just select this little globe icon, and then maybe I'll, put the position uh, over to last. So now I have my map icon over to the right. All right, so pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and add another view. So under primary navigation, I'll click on add a new view, and then maybe I want to select one of the, uh, I'll just type in chart and let's see what it gives us. Add a histogram for task data. This is actually what I want. So I'll go ahead and select that suggestion. And so in this case, it's already set it to a chart type it's pulling data from the tasks. Um, maybe I'll just go ahead and say, 
um, status chart for the title. So that's going to change that down here, status chart. Um, let's put that on the last uh, on the last part of the view panel, and let's make it a horizontal bar chart. And so for group aggregate, I'll keep count, but more importantly, I want to select the chart column. And in this case, I want it to select the status column, right? So now I can see that I have, you know, a certain number of tasks that are in different states, like not started, in progress, and complete, right? And then finally, maybe I want to change the, uh, the look of the, the chart itself. And in this case, let's go ahead and change the icon to something that's more of like a chart. So I'll just select one of these icons here. And so now we can see that we have that status chart icon corresponding to the different uh, view type. All right. So hopefully this gives you an idea how easy it is to customize different view types. AppSheet's UI branding feature provides easy UI customization without requiring any knowledge of HTML or CSS. The UI branding features point and click environment allows you to customize an app's overall visual theme, primary color, app logo, along with other visual properties. Okay, so let's return to our demo app and take a look at some of the UI branding capabilities. So to, to pull up the branding uh, feature, I just click on settings up here and then I'll select theme and brand. And there we go. Now I can have all the different options to change the look and feel of the app, both the overall theme, uh, the primary color, uh, maybe I'll select a different logo. So in this case, maybe like a, a checklist kind of a logo uh, and some other things where if I want to maybe customize the launch image, have a background image. And yeah, these are pretty straightforward uh, items here. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to customize uh, the look and feel just by pointing and clicking. Finally, AppSheet's conditional formatting feature enables expression-based formatting of UI elements, such as conditional text highlighting, color, icon, etc. For example, you could format a task to appear in bold red when it is due today or earlier. Other UX options enable application-wide settings, such as overall text, font, and system message localization. Let's return to the demo. Okay, so let's play around with some different format rules, okay? So first off, before I even create anything, I'm just gonna show you that we have some highlights already employed here in this application where we have the different tasks of status not started, in progress, complete, as having different colors. So let's take a look at how that's actually done. So if I go over here under the Views tab, you can see there's this extra little option here for format rules. And I happen to have some existing uh, format rules already defined. So for completed tasks, I have a status equals complete as the condition uh, and it's applying it to that column status and that there you can see I have like a, a text color of green and so that's what we're seeing over here and likewise for the other format rules I just check the the different status and I apply a different color so pretty straightforward so let's go ahead and create a new format rule so I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus button to add a format rule I could select one of these selections here but let's just go ahead and create something for scratch all right, so now I have my new format rule and I can just name it something like past due tasks. All right, and in this case, I'm gonna pull up the expression assistant here and I want the, the due date to be less than or equal to today. So there we go, due date is less than or equal to today. So that's our condition. So now we just have to apply it to whichever column we want to do it with. All right, so I'm gonna apply it to these three columns and then now I just assign it a color. So in this case, I'm gonna apply uh, the color red to the, the tasks that happen to be past due, right? And then I might wanna make that um, a little bit more bold or underline, etc. So as you can see, now these things are jumping out at me saying that these different tasks are past due. This concludes this video on building UIs in AppSheet. For more information, here are some useful links to help you get started.